Hey everyone, Eric here from Tournamix, the ultimate mix competition website. I hope you're doing well today. If you like mix competitions, we host two every month. Check us out. It's a lot of fun. There's a link in the description below. Uh, just by subscribing, actually, you get three free sets of multi-tracks. These are very high quality multi-tracks. So that's something you can also check out uh, just by visiting the site. And uh, if you like what you hear today, please subscribe. All right, so today we're looking at drum mixing. And uh, if you follow my last video on phase, we solved the phase issues uh, on these drums. This is uh, a, a really cool song called Seasons from the band Dialma. So thank you to them for providing us with our song. We're in the middle of the month right now. And uh, yeah, if you feel like joining the mix contest, you can certainly do so. Submissions are due by the 20th though. So, you know, get on that. Uh, but here's the drums. Let's maybe actually take a listen to the song first, just so you can familiarize yourselves. Pretty badass stuff. I absolutely love that. Great groove, great band. Um, let's take a look at the drums. Okay, so here's the drums completely raw. And now fully mixed. All right, so quite a change. Let me break that down for you. I didn't use samples, by the way, and that was sort of one of the things I wanted to focus on today is just trying to get a good natural drum sound. Uh, you can see I did almost nothing, right? This is the drums in red here. Well, these guys too, but they don't have anything on them. Um, yeah, this is the full drum processing, so this won't take long. All right, so I like to start with overheads. So uh, this is the chain that I came up with. Very, very subtle. Um, didn't change the sound overly, but I thought it improved it. So bit of EQ, gentle peak limiting, little bit of compression and a little bit of extra EQ with the tone knob here. I've darkened the signal just a bit. And then finally, I, I did send the overheads to some reverb. This is like a 0.6 second room reverb. Um, we didn't have room mics provided, so I thought that helped a bit. Um, so here's the raw signal, and then I'll bring in the, uh, the processing. Right, sounds better to my ear. Um, the reverb, uh, the reverb helps to make the snare sound a little bigger, and the the EQ, you know, just subtly cleans up the signal, but not like a huge change here. Okay, and again, I I don't tend to do a lot to my overheads. Some people do, uh, whatever works for you. I like to usually keep the the sound fairly intact, but I thought that helped. All right, next up's the kick, and this is definitely the one that under you know underwent the the most radical change in terms of tone. You can see a pretty big EQ uh, here. Um, so if I were to mute these two plugins, here's just the kick. Right. Let me bypass the compression and see if we can hear that. So pretty big change. All right, so this kind of kick EQ is, is nothing new. Uh, for rock and metal and most heavy genres, you're gonna see this type of thing a lot, you know, bringing up a lot of the clicky high-end uh, beater kind of thing, um, you know, cutting some, some mid-range, lower mid-range. And in this case, I have a little shelf giving it a bit of body um, and a high pass at about 50 Hertz. Okay, I thought that helped a lot. And then just some sort of, you know, pretty gentle compression. I mean, it wasn't hitting it too hard. Right, we got it, you know, maybe three dB tops, um, fast release, slow attack. Well, not that slow, you know, 10 to 15 milliseconds probably. Uh, this is a fairly high ratio on, on uh, Novatron. It's uh, six, six to one as far as I remember. Um, but it doesn't sound like it to me always. I find it actually the best setting. Um, the, the, the mix setting here is two to one, which you might think is more useful, but I almost always just leave it on limit. Um, it doesn't sound like a limiter to me. It sounds just like, sounds good. <laughs> All right, so that's the kick um, in context here. Let me take this EQ on and off. Makes a big difference. All right, let's move on. All right, so for this snare, it actually sounded pretty good to me. Here's the raw snare.
Yes, yeah, I actually that's not a bad sound. I, I like that. Uh, it, it sounded a lot more mix ready than the kick. Um, I still added this EQ to it, which is again a very very standard looking snare EQ. Some body, some sizzle, a little bit of a cut here, high pass. This is you could like paste this onto any snare, and it would probably <laughs> probably make it sound better. And then the exact same settings for compression as I as I used on the kick. So here it is mixed. So it looks like a fairly big, you know, EQ moves here, but it didn't really change the sound that much. Okay. Um, but overall, uh, I, I thought it worked and um, the snare just already sounded kind of good to me. So it, it really didn't need much work. So here's where we're at so far. All right, so the tom's pretty boring, very, very standard tom kind of EQs, just bringing out the high end a bit. There's the two EQs I came up with for the uh, the rack tom and the floor tom, respectively. Um, you know, so not much to report there. Uh, and the, there really wasn't, there was actually only one uh, rack tom in the whole song. And then over here, we had that uh, this little floor tom passage at, at one point. So we can, you know, take a quick look at that. Yes, yeah, so that cleaned up really nicely with EQ. Uh, you know, a lot of time with, with drum shells, it's not so much about bringing out a lot of low end, although that can be great. Uh, it's often just about cleaning out the mid range and, you know, perking things up in the high end, especially for aggressive rock styles, you know, maybe not for more like indie or vintage kind of stuff, but, you know, for rock, I, I find that pretty much always helps. And then I used Omega A to clip it a little bit. Um, this, this probably didn't change the sound too much. A little bit. Not sure why I didn't put that on the rack tom, probably just because there was only one hit. <laughs> okay, so that is like the full mix drums. Now, the, the thing we haven't got to yet, and it's very important, is the parallel processing, all right, and the drum bus processing. Let me just quickly show you the drum bus. This is something, if you've watched any of my drum videos before, I do this on every drum that I mix. Uh, this is the, always works. If you have Novatron, take a screenshot, try these settings out. This is very effective. S super slow attack, fast release internal side chain set to about 250. This really, really helps the kick, okay? Allows the kick to kind of punch through. Um, and then a little bit of the saturation pushed up. Uh, let's hear this on and off. So, you know, it's it's not always easy to hear drum bus compression. Um, I'm still kind of finding my stride with it. But to, to my ear, that really, really brought out the kick. And it also brought out the cymbals. It just made the whole thing sound a little bit more exciting. All right, now let's get on to the parallel stuff. I use two um, different parallel processing techniques. One of them is very standard. This is my what I call my Snickums track. Feel free to copy that. It will make your drums sound better if you name your parallel compression Snickums. I promise you. Snare, kick, toms, okay. So this is uh, basically uh, a send for my kick, snare, and the toms, okay, both of these guys. You can see send seven here, right? Coming over to the Snickums track, which is nothing more than your typical parallel processing. Here's what it sounds like. Turn that off. All right, so I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just smashing it with a, an 1176 all in kind of sound, which is, you know, one of the more common compressors to use for this job. And I'm also bringing up the high end and the low end a bit. So um, if, you, if you haven't done, um, used an EQ, sorry, on your parallel compression track, I think it's helpful. And this is in fact how New York style compression started, I believe. They, they would often bring up the highs and lows. So you're getting parallel EQ as well. All right, so that was happening. And then the other one that I added, which is something I've been doing quite a bit recently, let me just close this guy up, is more of just like a, I don't know, I'm calling it drum crush. This is um, a full send from the drum bus. Okay, you can see send 22 here is arriving over here. So this is an exact duplicate of the entire drum kit. You can see the fader is very, very low, and I've processed it with Devilock. Okay, very, very cool plugin. Um, just 
killing it with devil lock and rolling off a lot of the high end, okay? The high end roll off is very important. So here's the raw track, very quiet. And here it is processed. Right, huge change. But let me show you without the darkness control. So if I were to take this back to zero, hear the symbols? It's crazy. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, one of my motivations for using this as well as the Snickums track uh, was the fact that we didn't have a room mic. So to my ear, this, you know, kind of sounds like a room mic and it just adds a bit of extra excitement. All right, let's hear it all together. I'm gonna mute these two, both of them. Here's just like what the drums would have sounded like and then I'll bring in the parallel stuff. All right, so obviously we're getting more gain on the drum shells, but we're also getting a ton more punch. Now let me show you just this little drum crush again. This is mixed really low, right? Let's try hearing if this makes a difference. So I'll start with it off. Yeah, it's a small change, but I like it. It just adds a little bit more explosiveness to the sound and I don't know, just kind of glues thing a little bit, glues things together a little bit. Uh, again, this has kind of, because it's dark, you know, that that's offering a little bit more of that kind of mid-range, lower mid-range glue and, and warmth, I think, to the, to the kit. Um, all right, so here's the full drums. and in context of the full song. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Pretty simple stuff, right? Again, I didn't sort of reinvent the wheel here. Um, didn't even use that many plugins. Just went through some kind of tried, tested and true, you know, drum techniques, uh, basic EQ and compression, some parallel processing. And, you know, I, to my ear at least, we have a drum sound that sounds quite good. We didn't have to rely on samples. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I expect a lot of you this month will use samples. And believe me, I was tempted. But there is something to be said for just a good natural drum sound. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll talk soon.